Oh, can everybody hear me? Good. Um, so I am Kira Evans. I'm a software engineer working for the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Um, and today I'd like to talk about this super cool project I'm working on called Napari. So um, for any of those familiar out there with the state of like biology, um, technology is getting more and more advanced and scientists are able to capture larger and more complicated data sets. Take for example this developing mouse embryo uh, from the Keller lab. It's a whopping 10 terabytes in size. And this is kind of like what the <coughs> ecosystem looks like to your standard computational biologist. It's like super scattered. It's just, it's just everywhere, really. And um, so I'm introducing Napari. And uh, kind of what we wanted to do with this is combine multiple workflows into one. Um, so where you would be using like a few different data visualization libraries, you might just be using ours. Um, and so we built it on top of Qt for the window system and VizPy. And VizPy, it's um, kind of, it's based on OpenGL and that gives us this wonderful access to the GPU. Um, which makes all of our rendering super fast. Um, we're also meant to be compatible with the scientific Python stack, and we are developing completely in the open. It's currently on GitHub, as you see from the link on there. Um, but please be warned, it is still in the alpha stage, and there will be breaking changes. So these are our lovely contributors. Um, you may recognize Loic and Juan, who's a scikit image developer. Um, we're like, this is very much a collaborative effort. We have members from many different organizations. So getting into like Napari, this is, this is kind of what it looks like. It's centered around the viewer. And the viewer consists of a few different parts. So we have the canvas, and this is like where all of your data is going to be displayed. Um, you can pan and zoom interactively with it. It's great. Um, and we use the concept of layers, kind of similar to Photoshop. And for each layer type, um, it corresponds to a different data type. So for example, you might have an image layer or a layer that's just for annotating regions. And we have over here the layer specific controls. So these are dependent on what layer you have selected. Um, right now we have an image layer selected. So these are the brightness and contrast limits. But if you were, for example, to select a region type of layer, then it could be like a paintbrush and eraser tool. And these are the dimension sliders. And this is what kind of what gives Napari its n-dimensional capabilities. You can use these to slice through um, any amount of dimensions that are not currently being viewed. And we have this cool little button over here. Um, and when you press it, it will actually launch up an IPython terminal within the window. So we have six current uh, six layer types at the moment. We have an image layer for any NumPy-like arrays. So this includes Dask and Czar. We have a pyramidal layer for multi-resolution images, a labels layer for kind of annotating regions uh, with like a Boolean mask um, or integer. A points layer for annotating points, vectors if you want to have a lot of lines, and shapes if you want to be drawing polygons and the like. Some other cool features we have are 3D rendering. Uh, you can launch from scripts, Jupyter Notebooks, or the command line. Um, and you can add custom shortcuts and key bindings. 
So I'm going to bring up some examples of Napari in action, since I've been talking about it for so much. So this is some calcium imaging data from the Svoboda lab. Um, you can see us panning and zooming around in here. And we are going to be able to show and hide different layers. And you can click on the arrow to expand the properties and change things like opacity or the blending mode, the color map, et cetera. And now we're going to hide all of these layers and go to a multi-dimensional layer, which is the time series. Here is a pathology slide um, taken from the Chameleon uh, 16 Grand Challenge. Um, it's about 100,000 by 200,000 pixels in size. There are 10 levels to this pyramid. Um, and as you can see, as we zoom in and out, we're loading up the different resolutions of this image. Um, it's leveraging Dask again here. Um, and it's, this data set is about 20 gigabytes in size. And you can see here we are labeling a cell using a shapes layer. As you can see, we have the biggest um, level of the pyramid here. So here are some SM fish spots um, from the Spoboda lab again. Um, this is a demonstration of our 3D rendering capabilities and some of our hotkeys um, where we will be switching through the different viewed axes of the image. Um, and you can see in a moment here, we are about to load into 3D mode. Um, so all of the points are kind of just rendered along um, where this stuff is. And um, now we're going into nuclei segmentation. And this is another example, or a more complicated example of using custom shortcuts and key bindings. So. Um, we're going to be labeling the background of this image, uh, the nuclei. And we are going to kind of run an algorithm on this. And it's going to automatically segment all of this for us with the press of a single button. And this is using. Um, a library called Segmentify that's built on top of Napari. And you can open up the um, IPython terminal here and get your output back out. So these are our planned features. Um, we want to have a standalone app uh, with things like file I.O., drop down menus, etc. We want full script and macro generation. Um, we want to have multiple linked canvases and histograms and an infrastructure for a plugin ecosystem, kind of like what you just saw in the last example. Um, we also plan to have remote data access and Jupyter Lab integration. So if you have any ideas, please submit a feature request at the link above. And um, thank you all for coming. Um, this is a quick start guide if you feel like taking a picture. Great work. I have a question for myself. Uh -huh. uh, you mentioned uh, very large data sets. And I'm just curious, uh, up to which extent can you upload I mean, terabyte size data sets? Is it the case that, that there is some infrastructure that downsampled that so that it's aware of the infrastructure that you have at hand, uh, namely, oh, I'm running on my laptop, so I don't even have a memory to load out of that. So downsample, so you can actually see something using Napari. Uh, what's the story? Um, so with pyramid layers, which is kind of what you're getting at, um, we do not do the, we do not automatically compute the different resolutions for you. You need to provide them yourself. But that being said, um, as long as it fits inside like the storage of your computer. If it's one terabyte, if you can load it up in Dask, you can load it up in Napari. Perfect. Thank you.
Impressive. And for those of you not familiar with Dask, that's a um, library for the lazy loading of arrays. Hi. Um, great work, fantastic. I really like what you're doing. Um, curious, how how do you foresee the 3D rotations and things working with Dask and you know loading the data lazily, just the data you need to do the 3D slices? Yeah, that's um, that's a bit more complicated. Yeah, when it comes to the pyramid layer and you have. 3D pyramid layers are currently not supported yet um, because we're going to have to do a bunch of complicated maths on just what level uh, to slice everything at when it's at odd angles. Um, yeah. Very cool. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. submission. Yeah, thank you. Um. 